my name is Fezan Khan and in this video we are going to see how we can build this retail billing system step by step from scratch so let me firstly give you a quick demonstration of how this project works firstly we need to enter customer details so if you are not going to enter these details then you won't be able to generate the bill it says customer details required so I'll enter my name and then some random phone number after that we need to enter the quantity of the products that you want to purchase for example face cream I want two hair gel I want one then from grocery I'll select dal as two quantity then sugar as three quantity from cold drinks I'll select Pepsi as one Coca Cola as two after this we have to click on this total which simply provides you the total cosmetic price total grocery price and total cold drink price and here some tax is added after this we can click on this bill so this will generate the bill inside this bill area and it will ask whether you want to save this bill or not so I'm gonna save it so once I click on save this bill uh, with this bill number which is random is saved successfully after that you can send this bill to any email address for that you have to click on this email here you have to provide the sender's email means your email and your password and then to whom you want to send this bill okay that person email address you have to mention here after you enter you can click on the send button it says bill is successfully sent we can check it so I'll open my Google Chrome and will open Gmail as you can see that we have received the bill with bill number three nine three six zero okay after that we have this print button on clicking this print button if your printer is connected with your PC then this bill will be printed out here you just need to enter the file name in which this bill will be saved it will be a PDF file so you can simply enter any name once you'll click save if your printer is connected this bill will be printed and at last we have this clear button once you'll click on it everything will be cleared so do you really want to clear yes so you can see everything is cleared after that we have this search option here so whatever bills you have saved you can search them and open them inside this bill area for example let me show you which bill numbers are saved already so we have two bills here I will be opening this one 2765 so here I'll search for 2765 once you search it you can see that bill has opened inside this bill area okay and at last what we will see we will see how we can create exe file of our project okay and we'll see how we can install it in our PC so you need two things to start with this project firstly is the Python interpreter and then any IDE where you will write your code okay I'm gonna use PyCharm I will be providing you the link 
in the description of this video. From there you can watch and download and install. So if you are using PyCharm, what you have to do, go to file, select new project, give a project folder name here. It can be billing project. From here you need to select the Python interpreter. Uh, the latest one you can go with. I have three interpreters installed. So I'll select the latest one, which is 3.10. Okay, 3.10. After that, you just have to click on this create button. I want this project to open on a new window. So I'll select new window. So once the project setup is done, you will see something like this. Now you have to create a Python file in which you will write the code. So just right click on this project folder name go to new and select python file here you have to provide any python file name i'll go with main so this is your python file inside which you will write your python code so if you see this original project firstly we will be designing this gui okay so for that we have one module in python which is tkinter that will help us to create graphical user interface very easily we just need to import it and use its classes and methods so let's import that in our code so we'll write from tkinter import asterisk so this line means that we are importing all the classes and methods that are present inside this tkinter module okay assume tkinter as a file inside which we have some classes and methods that will help in creating graphical user interface very easily so firstly what we have to do we have to create a window right so for creating window we have a class inside this tkinter module we just need to create object of that class. So how do we do that? We write object name as root and we assign this class to this object root. Okay, so this is the way. So this TK class will help in creating our window. Okay, we are simply creating object of this TK class. Once you create the object of TK class and if you run at this stage, you can see there are no errors and code is successfully ended okay but we were not able to see the gui window this is because uh, this code executed very fast so our eyes were not able to see that window so in order to see that window continuously we have one method inside this tk which holds the window on the screen okay so in order to use that method we'll take help of this object variable so we'll write object variable dot main loop method so this main loop method will help in viewing our window okay now if you rerun it you can see the window is created and by default this is the size of our window where the title is tk okay but uh, we want a bigger size right so we will set the size of this window and we'll also change the title so in order to uh, change the title of our window we have a method title inside this tk class so again we'll access that method with the help of this object root okay so we'll use title method and to this title method we have to pass the string so it will be uh, retail billing system like this okay so now if you run it you can see the title is changed uh, you are not able to see the title because the window size is small but if you drag it you will be able to see it and now let's change the size of our window 
for changing the size we again have one method which is known as geometry so we'll use that so we'll write root dot geometry and here we need to pass uh, the width small x then the height okay so width that i'm going to use is 1270 and the height that i'll be using is 685 this is the same width and the height that I have used in my original project. So now if I run it, you can see the window size is increased, right? So by default, the icon is this leaf, okay? But we can change it. Let's see how we can change the icon. So firstly, we will be requiring the icon image. So from where you can get that? Just open your Google and there you need to search for icon-icons.com. Here just simply enter billing. So you will be getting these icons here. Whichever you like, you can simply open it. Okay. And you have to download the ICO formatted image. Okay. So select ICO and download the smallest image 32 px once the icon is downloaded you can simply copy the icon and paste it inside the same folder where your python file is okay you can change the name to icon.icu or any name of your choice like this okay so this is the icon that we will be adding now to add the icon we have one method which is known as icon bitmap okay so that method we can access only with the help of the object variable so root dot icon bitmap and here we'll pass the icon name which is icon dot icu like this now if you run it you can see the icon is changed all right and now what we need to create let's check the original project so we need to add this title firstly right so in tkinter the text is always added on our label okay and the label is known as a widget so what is a widget anything that you are seeing on this screen is a widget like for example this button is a widget okay this text area is a widget where you will be seeing the bill right this entry field is a widget where you will see the tax amount tax amount right similarly this is a frame okay this is again a widget inside which we have added these products all these buttons are a widget only so labels buttons frames entry fields text area all are widgets only okay so firstly let's create this heading so as i told you that we cannot directly add the text for adding the text, we have to firstly create a label and then on that label, we will be adding the text. So I'll write heading label. This is the name that I'm giving to a label and label is created with the help of a label class that is present inside this tkinter module. Okay. So we are simply using the class and this will help us in easily creating the label. Okay. So first thing that we need to pass to this label is where you want to see this label. We want to see this label on our window, right? And the window name is root. So we'll pass root here. After that, what should be the text on this label? So the text will be retail billing system. Now, after adding the text, if you run at this stage you won't be able to see this label the reason is 
you have just created a label but you have not placed it position it on your window right where you want to see this label at the top at the bottom on the left hand side or on the right hand side so for that we have a method inside this label class okay uh, we will use that method and we'll place our label on our window so we'll be using this object variable heading label to access the method of this class and the method name that i'm going to use is path okay so this will simply add this label at the top now if i run it you will see the label here right retail billing system so right now this is the font size okay and the styling by default but we will change it okay we'll uh, try to make it look uh, in the same way as it is in our original project so let's add the font for this text so for adding the font we have to pass font argument here and the value will be inside uh, these parentheses which is nothing but a tuple okay first thing that we need to pass is the font style so i'm going to use times new roman after that we need to pass the size of the text so the size that i have used in my original is 30 px so i'm going to pass 30 here after that uh, you can mention whether you want the text to be bold, italic or underlined. So I want the text to be bold. So I'll pass bold here. Okay, that's it. Now if you run it, you can see uh, the font is changed. After that, you can change the background color of this label on which this text is added. Right. So we will be adding BG bg stands for background uh, let me just move it to a new line so that it's visible to you so here we'll mention bg equals to the color name so the color that i'm going to use is gray 20. okay in tk enter we can use a lot of different colors so let me show you uh, what colors you can use so simply go to google and search for tkinter colors open uh, any of these images you can save these images and from here you can see different colors names that you can use in tkinter so i am going to use gray 20 right uh, it's on this side yeah this is the gray 20 color that i'm going to use okay so it's up to you which color you use now if i run it so this is how it looks okay uh, now we have to change this text color so in order to change the text color we have another argument which is fg which stands for foreground either you can write complete foreground spelling or just fg similarly either you can write background or just bg both works same way and here we will mention the color name so i'm going to use gold okay so this is how it looks after that i want to fill this uh, label completely onto this x-axis okay so for that uh, to this pack method we have one argument which is fill and here we'll mention that in which direction you want to fill this label so we want to fill this in the x direction like this after that let's add the border to this label so to this label we will add border bd equals to 12 okay i don't think you see any difference uh, let's add the styling to this border uh, by using this relief argument and the value will be groove yeah so this is how it looks now 
instead of groove there are some more values that you can use uh, for example there is this flat okay uh, then there is uh, this ridge okay so it's up to you which one uh, you want to use you can simply google uh, these values so we'll get a list of values which you can use okay so i'll go with groove so after creating uh, this heading now we need to create this customer detail section okay so this is nothing but a label frame with a label customer details okay so firstly we will be creating a label frame okay and inside that we will be adding label name and its corresponding entry field okay uh, this is known as entry field and then phone number its entry field then bill number its entry field and then the search button so firstly we will be creating a frame customer details frame and this is a label frame so it will be created with the help of a label frame class okay uh, which is present inside this speak enter again the same thing that where you want to see this label frame i want to see this label frame inside my window so we'll pass root here after that what text you want to see so we want to see customer details as the text right again if you run at this stage you won't be able to see this label frame the reason is you just have have created this label frame but you have not positioned it on your screen you have not placed it where you want to see this uh, frame right so we will use this object variable dot pack method okay uh, let's run and see you are not able to see it because the speciality of the label frame is that once you start adding things inside it uh, then only it is visible for example once you will add a label inside it name label okay uh, you will be able to see that frame okay so firstly let's add this name label inside this frame okay so i'll create a name label and as you know the label is created with the help of a label class this label will be inside this customer details frame right so this time we will pass this customer details frame okay after that what will be the text so the text will be name and then other things like font and all we will be adding later okay for now uh, let me just uh, position it on inside this frame okay so right now if i'll run you won't be able to see anything right so we need to position it so we'll write name label dot so we have used this path method to position something on our window right we also have one more method which is known as grid okay uh, this helps in adding things on our window in the form of rows and columns okay so uh, we have to just mention the row uh, number and the column uh, number okay uh, to add uh, this on our uh, frame okay so to this grid method we will mention row 0 and column 0 why row 0 and column 0 because uh, this label is the first thing getting added inside this frame okay so it has to be in at the starting position only right so if i run now you can see we are able to see this frame first of all and then this label okay i hope you are able to understand it now we need to just provide some font to this label okay add some border to it similarly font to this name label okay so let's add so font that i'm going to add uh, for this customer details text is 
times new roman okay so the styling will be times new roman size of the text will be 15 and i'll make the text as bold so if you see this is how it looks okay i'll change the color so i'll move to a new line here i'll mention the text color to be gold okay i think i have added extra comma now if i run it the, yeah this is how it looks now let's add border to this frame so here i'll mention border equals to 8 and then the styling to this border will be same as before groove okay and now let's provide font to this label name so here we have this label name so i'll add font and it will be uh, the same font okay so we can simply copy this font from here so styling will be times new roman size will be 15 and it will be bold and i forgot to add the background color to this label frame so let me add that to this customer details label frame here i'll mention the background color as gray 20. yeah this is fine now after this uh, to this label also i'll change the background color to gray 20 so that it can match uh, with this frame color right so here i'll mention bg equals to gray 20 okay like this then i'll change the text color to uh, white or any color of your choice so i'll move it to a new line and here i'll mention fg which stands for foreground which is nothing but the text color and the color will be white like this and now after adding the label name after that we have to add its entry field okay inside which you will enter the name right this entry field so let's create it so just like we are creating the label in the same way we have to create the entry field okay uh, using the entry class so here we'll mention that it's a name entry okay and entry field is created with the help of entry class again where you want to see this entry field we want to see this entry field inside this customer details frame right so we'll mention customer details frame before adding uh, further things let me just position it so we'll write name entry dot grid this time what do you think what will be the row and column value if you see this original project uh, this is at row 0 column 0 so this is at row 0 and column 1 right similarly this will be at row 0 column 2 okay it is in the form of a grid in the form of rows and columns so here we'll mention row 0 and column 1 so as you can see the entry field is created okay so by default this is the font that we are entering here this is the font size okay we can change it so here we'll mention font the style that we'll be using is Arial and the size of the text will be 15 okay yeah this is fine after that i will provide border to the entry field so here i'll mention border equals to 7 see these values you can uh, change it according to your own requirement okay like this 
and then we will reduce some width of the entry field so here i'll write width equals to 18 like this a little uh, reduce right and after that uh, we will be providing some spacing between this name label and this entry field okay so in order to provide horizontal spacing uh, inside this grid method of this name label i will mention pad x equals to 20 so this will add 20 pixels spacing on the left hand side and on the right hand side of this name label so you can see 20 pixels here and 20 pixels here is added okay in the same way you can provide some uh, padding horizontal padding to this entry field so here you can mention uh, pad x equals to 8 so 8 pixels here and 8 pixels here is added okay and similarly you can provide some uh, vertical padding okay vertical spacing so to this name label only i will add pad y equals to 2 pixels okay so 2 pixels spacing is added from top and bottom next we have to create phone label just next to this entry field right and its corresponding entry field just like you can see here okay so it will be created in the similar way just like we created this name and its entry field right uh, so firstly we'll be creating phone label so that will be created in the same way so i can simply copy this paste here and then change the name so we can place multiple cursors in PyCharm with the help of Alt key and mouse left button. So we can do uh, uh, changes at the same time at different places. Okay. So this will change to phone label. Then the text instead of name will be changed to phone. Okay. Uh, everything else like font, background, foreground will remain same then uh, we need to change uh, where you want to see this phone label this time uh, the column value will be changed to 2 because at column 1 we have this entry field right so now if I run it you can see we got this phone label just next to this phone label we have to create entry field so it will be the same entry field only so we can copy this entry field from here okay and we will paste here and then we'll change the name to phone entry okay column value will be changed to three like this and now after this we have to create uh, this a bill number label and its entry field and then this search button so let's quickly create these three so we can again use the same label and same entry field and we'll do the changes in that so i'll simply paste it so this will become bill number label and here the text will be changed to bill number okay uh, column will be changed to three row will remain same because it has to be in the same row right uh, and then i'll copy this entry field so this will now be bill number entry field right uh, column will be changed to four so if I run it, so this is how it is looking. So actually, I think I uh, have given wrong column number to this label, bill number. Let's see. 
bill number has to be at column 4 right because this is already at column 3 right so this will be at column 4 then this will be at column 5 yeah now it's better and uh, at last we have to add the search button so button is created with the help of a button class just like we are creating a label with the help of a label class entry with the help of entry class so the button will be created with the help of a button class so where you want to see this button we want to see this button inside this customer details frame so we'll pass customer details frame here okay then what should be the text on that button uh, we have to mention here search okay and then we will be providing font for this text okay that we'll do it later but firstly uh, let's just position it so we'll write search button dot grid method row will be zero only column will be changed to six and i'll add pad x of 10 px like this now let's change the font of this text okay so here i'll mention font the styling will be arial size of the text will be 12 and i'll make the text as bold okay like this then we can add border border of 7 like this okay uh, let me just provide uh, some more uh, horizontal padding so i'll change it to 20 px and to the search button i will also mention pad y of 8 pixels okay so this has increased the horizontal uh, sorry vertical spacing of all the uh, widgets right so we can remove uh, the vertical spacing that we gave to this name label right two pixels so we can remove it it's of no use now because uh, by giving uh, vertical padding to this search button it has applied to all the other uh, widgets right I hope this is clear and uh, this and this spacing is left right so to the pack method of this uh, customer details label frame we will mention uh, fill x okay just like we did uh, for the above label so customer details label frame to this pack method will mention fill x so this will fill the complete x-axis sorry i have mistakenly cut from here i don't have to cut it yeah this is fine and uh, you see uh, there is no gapping between this uh, label and this frame right so we can provide pad y uh, uh, to this label uh, sorry uh, to this either to this label or to this frame it's up to you okay so we can provide pad y equals to 10 yeah this is better now uh, after that i want to provide some width to this button see the size is increased okay uh, one thing uh, that I need to change here is this name. Uh, it has to be phone number, okay, not just phone. So here we have this text. We'll change it to phone number. Yeah, now it looks same as it is in original project, right? And now we have to create this particular section so how do we start firstly we will be creating one products frame okay inside which we will be adding uh, this cosmetics label frame and its product 
then grocery label frame and its product then cold drinks label frame and its product and then this bill area section okay inside that uh, frame only okay so frame is nothing but a container uh, which help us to simplify the sections right uh, so this was added in this customer details frame right and now we are uh, creating another frame inside which we'll be adding uh, these sections okay so i hope uh, i'm making sense you will understand it once uh, we'll do the code okay so firstly i'll be creating a frame okay so this will be a products frame or you can name it anything and frame is created with the help of a frame class the difference between frame and a label frame is that uh, frame does not have a label but label frame has a label that's it okay otherwise both are simply containers inside which uh, we simply add buttons and labels and entry wheels okay so this frame again uh, where you want to add this frame uh, this time we will not be adding this frame inside this customer details frame right we'll be adding this frame inside my window name right which is root so we'll pass root here okay and then we can simply pack it so when we use pack method uh, it simply packs everything one after the other okay so firstly we packed this heading label so it was at the top then we packed this customer details frame which was just next to this and now we are packing this products frame right which will be just next to that customer details frame right and inside customer details frame we added all these labels and buttons right sorry one button only right so i hope this is clear to you and as you know if i'll run at this stage you won't be able to see this frame uh, because i told you uh, frames are visible only when you start adding things inside it so first thing that we need to add is uh, this cosmetics label frame okay firstly we'll create this cosmetics label frame and then uh, inside it we'll be adding these labels and the corresponding entry fields so we'll create cosmetics frame okay and this will be a label frame and this label frame uh, will now be inside this products frame so we'll pass products frame here okay the text for this label frame will be cosmetics then we have to provide font for this text border for this label frame styling to the border background color and the text color which we have already done it before right when we were creating the label frame so we can simply copy those uh, values okay so we'll copy the font we'll copy the text color we'll copy the border the styling and the background color so we can copy these things and we can simply paste here put comma here okay so after creating the label frame you need to position it so we'll write cosmetics frame dot grid method okay so where you want to uh, grid it and why i'm using grid method because uh, as you can see in the original project uh, this section is in the form of rows and columns where uh, this cosmetics frame is at row 0 column 0 uh, this grocery frame will be at row 0 column 1 this will be at row 0 column 2 and then this will be at row 0 column 3 I hope uh, you are getting it so that's why I am using grid method it will be easy to position okay so row will be 0 and column will be zero okay so again if i run it uh, you won't be able to see this because this is again a frame only right firstly we created this frame and inside this frame we have created this label frame 
and now once we start adding things inside this label frame you will be able to see this label frame right so first thing that we need to add is uh, this bath soap label right and as you know how labels are created so bath soap label and we'll use a label class uh, this label will be inside my cosmetics frame right so i'll pass cosmetics frame here then the text will be bath soap okay after this we need to add font for this text so font will be same as uh, the previous label that we created this font label so we can copy the font from here okay in fact we can copy the text color as well so we'll paste here so we have copied font the background color and the text color so now if i run it oh you can't see it the reason is uh, this we have not positioned it right so we'll write bath soap label dot grid method okay and will be graded at row 0 and column 0 i hope you are able to understand what is happening here firstly we have created a frame inside this frame we are adding cosmetics frame okay and inside this cosmetics frame we are adding this bath soap label okay and since inside this cosmetics frame uh, nothing is there so that is why uh, we are writing row 0 and column 0 because this bath soap label is the first thing getting added inside that frame so now you are able to see this bath soap label and also this cosmetics label frame and this cosmetics label frame is inside a frame okay So after creating this bath soap label next we need to create this entry field okay so we'll name it bath soap entry okay and it will be created with the help of entry class only so we can uh, firstly uh, grade it so I'll write bath soap entry dot grade method uh, where do you think uh, it will be graded it will be graded at row 0 and column 1 okay just next to this bath soap label we want this entry field right so that is why column 1 so now if you run it uh, you are getting this error because you have not mentioned that where you want to see this entry field okay we want this entry field inside this cosmetics frame only right so we'll mention cosmetics frame yeah so this is how the entry field looks like uh, we'll increase the font size okay so we will be using the same font okay uh, then we'll reduce the width so we'll make the width as 10 yeah this is fine and then uh, we'll add border of 5 pixels and let me just uh, firstly add some uh, pad y uh, to this uh, frame right so that we can see some uh, vertical spacing between this customer detail section and this product uh, frame right so uh, to this product frame here we'll mention pad y equals to 10 pixels okay so now we have some spacing here coming to this uh, just like we have created this uh, bath soap and its entry field in the same way we will be creating the other products face cream face wash hair spray hair gel body lotion okay and we also need to uh, provide vertical spacing pad y okay so to this bath soap only label i'll mention 
pad y equals to 9 pixels. Uh, these values you can uh, play around, right? Uh, you can decrease or increase according to your own choice, okay? So I have used 9 pixels in my original project. That is why I'm using the same value here, okay? Uh, you can mention pad y equals to 9 here as well. So now let's create the other one which is face screen. Okay. As it has to be created in a similar way. So I will be simply copying uh, these lines. Okay. So label and the entry field I will copy and then I will do the changes in the name. So instead of bar soap. Uh, this will be changed to face screen. Okay, face screen label and face screen entry. The text here will be changed to face screen. Uh, then, uh, apart from this, everything else will remain as it is. Only the grid value, uh, row, and column value will change. Uh, row will become one this time because it has to be just below this. Uh, label right so row value will become one column will remain zero only okay here uh, this entry field will be at row one and column one okay so if you rerun it you can see this is how it looks uh, we also need to add some horizontal uh, padding okay pad x uh, so let's see uh, we'll uh, firstly add pad x uh, 10 px okay so to this bath soap label to this entry field and to this face cream label and to this entry field i'll mention pad x equals to 10 px okay so when we added to bath soap it has added 10 px here 10 px here uh, then when we add it to the entry field, it has added 10 px here and 10 px here. Okay. So this 10 px of this bath soap and of this entry field has simply overlapped. Okay. And after this face cream, uh, next we have face wash. Okay. So again, I will simply copy the label and the entry field and will paste here. So this will be changed to face wash. Okay. Uh, the text will be changed to face wash. Row value will change only. Column will remain same as the above one. Okay. Like this. So now I guess you can quickly complete it by yourself. The products, it's up to you what product names you choose. And one more thing, uh, the text here is centered, right? I want it to be uh, left aligned, okay? So that uh, this B should start from the same X distance as this F. Okay, so for that uh, we have to use one uh, argument which is a sticky. Okay, so uh, to these uh, labels we can add that sticky. Replace multiple cursors to these labels and mention sticky as W. Okay, so these labels will be sticked on the west hand side like this i hope this is clear to you so let me uh, quickly add other products and their corresponding entry field
so after adding all the cosmetic products now if you run it you will see something like this okay uh, since in these three uh, sticky is not added so that's why you are seeing them at the center you can add a sticky and value w Yeah, now it's fine. So after this cosmetic section, next we have grocery section, just next to this. Okay. So we'll uh, create grocery label frame, and that will be created in the same way as this cosmetics label frame, right? Uh, this cosmetics label frame was inside this products frame. so grocery frame will also be inside this products frame okay so cosmetics frame was at row 0 column 0 so grocery frame will be at row 0 and column 1 i hope you are getting it so here we'll mention uh this is a grocery frame the text will be changed to grocery okay uh, and it will be at column 1 row will be 0 only i hope you are getting it so again if i'll run at this stage you won't be able to see this grocery frame uh, let's add label and entry field inside this grocery frame so first product that we can see in my original project is rice so let's add rice and its entry field so i hope now you understood how things are getting added and it will be added in the similar way only so you can copy one entry field and one label from the top and you can simply paste it here what changes you need to do now uh, firstly change the frame name uh, this time you want these label and this entry field inside grocery frame right so we'll mention grocery frame after that uh, you need to change the text to rice okay change the name to rice label and rice entry field okay after that you have to change the row and column value okay since uh, it's a new frame okay and nothing is added uh, inside this grocery frame yet so uh, rice label is the first thing we are adding so it will be at row 0 column 0 okay rice entry has to be just next to this rice label so it will also be at row 0 but column value will be 1 okay if you run it you can see this rice label and its entry field i hope this is clear in the same way we will uh, do for rest of the products next one is oil so we can copy label and entry so this one will now be oil row value will be changed to 1 here row value will be 1 okay in the same way we'll do it for rest of the products i'll do it quickly okay
so as you can see uh, the grocery uh, section is also ready okay just next to this grocery section we have to create cold drink section so firstly we will be creating cold drinks label frame okay so i am going to copy uh, the grocery frame and we'll do the changes So I'll name it drinks frame. Here the text will be cold drinks. Okay. Uh, the column value will be changed to 2. Okay. Because at column 1 we already had grocery frame. Right. And now let's just start adding things inside this drinks frame. So again I'll be copying uh, one of the label and entry field from the top. And we'll paste here. We'll change the name as it is in my original project. So first is Maza. You can add any name of your choice. Okay. Any products. Row value will be 0. Here also row value will be 0. Instead of grocery frame, it will be drinks frame now. Okay. Yeah, like this. Uh, its entry field is not visible. Why? Uh, because the frame name is not changed here. This is drinks frame. Yeah, now it's visible. After Maza, we have Pepsi, then Sprite, so I will paste here, this name will be changed to Pepsi, here the text will be changed to Pepsi, row value will be changed to 1, here also 1. After Pepsi, then we have Sprite. Row value will be 2. Here also row value will be 2. After Sprite, then we have Dew, Fruity and Coca-Cola. This is due. Uh, let me just put it to lowercase. Due. It will be 3 and 3. After due, uh, it was fruity. And last one was Coca Cola. So this is done. And now we have to create a bill area okay uh, just like this one okay so firstly we will be creating a frame and that and then inside that frame we will be adding this uh, heading bill area okay and then this is nothing but a text area and uh, we'll also see how we can add a scroll bar to the text area so if the text will move uh, down so the scroll bar will be activated and you will be able to scroll up and down okay so we'll see this so let's create a 
फ्रेम बिल फ्रेम ओके एंड दिस विल बी सिंपली अ फ्रेम ओके नॉट अ लेबल फ्रेम एज यू कैन सी द ओरिजिनल प्रोजेक्ट दिस डज नॉट हैव एनी लेबल राइट सो इट्स सिंपली अ फ्रेम so this frame uh, will be inside my uh, product frame okay then i'll simply grade it so this will be graded at row uh 3 i guess let's see where the earlier frame was added drinks frame was added at uh, sorry row will be zero only column will be three okay after this drinks frame only we want that right so row will be zero only column will be three so we'll create bill area label using a label class this label will be inside my bill frame the text will be label area font for this text will be this only and now let's position this label so i'll write bill area label dot pack method why i'm using pack method uh, as you know this bill frame is a separate frame right and inside this frame we are adding this bill area right which is the first thing we are adding inside it okay and it has to be at the top inside this bill frame right so we are simply using pack method we could have also have used grid method with row 0 and column 0 that would also uh, be fine so now if i run it you can see this label area here we will provide border uh, to the frame build frame and uh, groove styling to it okay so this is the build frame so we'll pass bd as 8 and relief as groove okay like this then to this label area label also we will add border bd equals to 7 and relief equals to groove all right like this and now just below this uh, title we have to add the text area okay inside which you will uh, display the bill so for creating the text area there is a class called text okay so we'll write text area equals to text and this text class where you want to add this text area we want to add this text area inside this bill frame so we'll mention bill frame here okay and then we can simply pack it so we'll write text area dot pack so if i run it you can see this is the size it takes by default okay this is the text area that is added let's fix it so height that i'm going to use is 18 and width that i'm going to use is 60 so it will look something like this okay uh, so these values uh, you can simply uh, decrease or increase according to your choice okay so i have uh, simply checked it played with these values uh, to get the perfect values okay apart from this uh, this uh, text is wrong it should be uh, bill area right and it should be expanded uh, completely inside this frame okay so i'll we'll use fill x so here we'll mention fill x and this will be bill area yeah now this is fine and now let's add this scroll bar on the right hand side okay inside this text area 
so in order to add this scroll bar uh, we'll be using the scroll bar class okay to add this scroll bar and we'll name it scroll bar okay and this scroll bar also has to be inside this build frame only and after that we also have to mention that uh, whether you want horizontal scroll bar or vertical scroll bar so orient will be vertical and then after creating the scroll bar we also need to pack it and we have to pack it on the right hand side so we'll use pack method and side will be right okay let's see yeah so the scroll bar is added here okay uh, actually we need to decrease some width of this uh, text area so we'll make it uh, 55 so as you can see the scroll bar is added uh, inside this text area right uh, let me just uh, provide some pad x of 10 to this build frame okay so that you can see little spacing here and then uh, i'll fill this uh, scroll bar completely on the y axis okay so uh, here uh, i'll also mention fill equals to y just like we used to fill in the horizontal axis this time we'll fill the scroll bar on the y axis okay so inside this frame uh, this is filled right on the y axis okay right now uh, if I will write some text and will move it down, this scroll bar is not activated, right? This scroll bar is not active. So if you move it down, you won't be able to see the bottom text, okay? So because this is not functioning with uh, this text area, okay? This is not uh, connected with this text area. So how do we connect it? Uh, firstly, you will have to add uh, y scroll command equals to scroll bar dot set okay so this uh, will simply set the scroll bar with this text area okay so now if i run it so now this is scroll bar is set with this text area okay you can see this uh, it is set with the text area but you will not be able to see the upper view when you will scroll up okay so in order to move uh, this uh, text area up and down uh, using this scroll bar we have to configure the scroll bar so we'll write scroll bar dot config and here we'll pass the command equals to text area dot y view okay so what we want that whenever we scroll the scroll bar we should see the y view of the text area so we are simply configuring the scroll bar so we have firstly created the scroll bar okay then we have created the text area then we have set the scroll bar with this text area and then in order to see the vertical view of the text area you have to configure the scroll bar like this i hope this is clear to you now if you'll write some text and move it down so now you will be able to see the upper view of this text area by scrolling up this is scroll bar i hope this is clear to you okay so this products frame section is also completed just below it next we have to create this bill menu okay inside which we will be adding these labels these entry fields and then these buttons let's quickly finish it so firstly we will be creating a bill menu okay so just like we created uh, the product frame 
in the same way we'll be creating the bill menu but it will be a label frame this time okay so we have created this products frame right so uh, what we are going to copy we are going to copy this one okay because uh, this time i'll be creating a label frame right that's why i'm copying a label frame okay I'll paste here uh, and this will be bill menu frame. The text here will be bill menu. Okay. Uh, this bill menu frame will be inside my root window. Okay. Uh, if you see this products frame was inside my root window right and it was packed with a vertical spacing of 10 pixels right so this bill menu frame will also be inside my root window and it will be packed okay so you won't be able to see it let's add things inside it okay so first label that we will be adding inside this bill menu frame is cosmetic price label okay as you can see in this original project okay cosmetic price so i'll copy the already created label uh, like this one and i'll do the changes in it so this one will be named as cosmetic price cosmetic price and this label will be inside my bill menu frame the text will be cosmetic price okay uh, then the row value will be zero as this cosmetic price label is the first thing getting added inside this bill menu frame so if i run it and next to it we will be creating its entry field so i'll copy one entry field from above and we'll paste here so I'll change the name to cosmetic price entry. Okay, this will not be inside drinks frame, but inside bill menu frame. Okay. Its row will be zero and column will be one. And here you can add pad X of 10 pixels. And similarly, you can add uh, this grocery price and cold drink price and their entry fields. So we can copy these two things and we can paste here. This will be grocery price. Okay. Uh, row value will be changed to 1 and here also it will be 1 let's change the text to grocery price and just below this we also had to add cold drink price okay but uh, the space is not there so what we can do either we can reduce the size of uh, the labels okay or we can simply uh, remove the pad y values right that we added okay so it will move a little bit up this section will also move a little bit up so we'll get some more extra space right 
So what we can do, we can search in our code. So we'll press Ctrl R in PyCharm and we'll check pad y equals to 10. Okay, so uh, in heading label, we added pad y equals to 10. So we can simply uh, remove it and then add one more place we added here in products frame, right? So we can remove it. Let's run. Yeah, so you can see now we uh, are having some space for the third one. Okay. So let's add the third one. So this will be drinks price and drinks entry. Drinks price label and drinks price entry. Okay. Uh, cold drink price okay and this will be row 2 uh, still we need some extra space so what we can do we can uh, simply decrease some font size of uh, the label and the entry fields okay so here we have 15 let's make it 14 okay so just place multiple cursors so we'll make it 14 uh, we need some more extra spacing. Uh, let's make it 13. Yeah, now it's better. Right. Uh, and, and if you want, you can also uh, decrease vertical padding of uh, vertical padding 9, right? It is 9 here. So, yeah, I think this will, uh, will be better. Uh, instead of making it uh, 13 uh, we could make it 14 and we could reduce some vertical padding okay so you can press ctrl z make it 14 and then uh, you can simply decrease pad y value instead of 9 let's make it 6 now i think this looks better and uh, just next to this we have three more labels and their entry fields cosmetic tags grocery tags and cold drink tags and their entry fields okay so we can simply copy these right and we can paste them and we can do the changes in it okay so cosmetic price label will be changed to cosmetic tax okay here the text will be changed to tax uh, row value will be zero only a cosmetic tax label okay row value will be zero but the column value will become two here okay because it has to be after this uh, cosmetics entry uh, field right which is at column one okay firstly we have this label then we have this entry field after this again we want a cosmetic tax label right so it has to be at column two i hope you are getting it And the text will be changed to grocery tax. Okay, row value will be one only. Uh, the column value will be changed to two. And I forgot to change the column value here of this entry field. This will be three. Similarly, this grocery tax entry will also be at column three. 
then we'll change this label name and this entry field name to drinks tax and we'll change the text to cold drink tax label column will be changed to 2 and entry field column will be 3 and lastly we have to create this button frame and inside that we will be adding these buttons so i'll create a button frame using the frame class this button frame will be inside my build menu frame then i'll add border to it and styling to this border after that i'll simply grid it row value will be zero column will be four because it has to be just next to this drink stacks entry which is at column 3 right so that's why column 4 here now let's add button inside this frame so first button will be total button so we'll create this button with the help of a button class this button has to be inside this button frame then the text on this button will be total After that, I'll provide font for this text. The styling will be Arial. Size will be 16. And the button text will be bold. And then I will simply grade it. So I'll write total button dot grid. Row will be 0. And column will be 0. Okay. So this is how the button looks like. Now let me add background color to this button which will be gray 20 then the text color will be white after that I will add border to this button and width to it so here I will add border as 5 and width as 8 like this and now I'm going to add internal padding to this button okay and internal padding is provided in the same way but this time we will mention the pad y value inside this button so here I'll mention pad y equals to 10 so you can see the button uh, size is increased okay vertically and if you notice what is happening uh, here this is getting distorted right this is because uh, this button is at row 0 okay so row 0 is taking this much space so row 1 is starting just after that from here right that is why this is getting uh, to the bottom okay getting outside of the screen if we will increase more pad y uh, this will go more down okay so what do we have to do I want this button to take three row spaces okay so it will be at the center position so it will take three row space this row space then this row space and the last row space okay so this button will take three row space for that uh, to this button frame uh, we can mention row span of three so now this button frame will take three row spaces so if I run it so now you can see that that issue is resolved right and now I'm going to provide vertical padding to this button and this frame for that inside this grid method uh, we have to pass pad y of 20 pixels okay so between this frame and this button you can see vertical spacing okay and I also want to add horizontal padding so I'll mention pad x as 5 okay and now in the same way we have to create other buttons so I will be simply copying this button we'll paste it so this will change to bell button the text will be changed to bell uh, column value will be changed to 1 
okay like this after this we have to create email button After this, we have to create print button. And at last, we will have a clear button. So the GUI part is completed. In the next video, we will work on the functionality part of these buttons. Let me know in the comments if you have successfully completed the GUI part. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.